Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are looking at the last of uh, the Dea Tremendous inks that I'm looking at this month. If you are not watching this in uh, April 2023, uh, head back uh, into my channel and uh, have a look at some of these Dea Tremendous inks I've reviewed this month. They're great. Uh, and the one we are looking at today is this, Deepwater Obsession Black Blue. This is from the uh, uh, Black Edition line of inks. Uh, I'm going to look at it on some different kinds of paper, show some tests and have a bit of a chat about it. So we start with the ink here on a colouring card. You can see it's a very nice sort of uh, rich sort of teal blue black, if you will. Um, the black edition is inks that are black that are coloured in a, so there's like the black red and things like that. This is the black blue, so it's not strictly a blue black in that sense. Uh, it's just a very, very rich dark blue and it runs a sort of a, on the tealy end, a little bit of sheen there. Um, let's look at it on some paper. And we start with it here, as always, on uh, 68 GSM Tomo River paper, the old Tomo River. You can see here in the swatch, you get some lovely sort of, you know, shading and different tonal colours coming through, but that tealy sort of blue-black, greeny blue-black does shine through quite strongly. You can see this page was riddled with splotches. My, I had it in two pens, the Twisby Go Broad and Extra Fine, and the Broad was just like dripping ink, which is great. Um, love that so much. Let's talk about the five points about this ink though. So I said it's made in Hardet in Germany, um, made by basically a family run company, really like attention to detail in terms of the quality of the products and the all of, and the dyes and all those kinds of things that go into it. It's affordable, and I mean that's relatively affordable in comparison to some other brands. I think Detrimentus is very fairly priced. Um, so this is from the Black Edition line. I said a couple of inks there that have, you know, a black tone undertone to you know like the particular colors so this is the the blue version of that i said it is safe and it's safe for fountain pens um they're made for fountain pens there's no sort of like really in the standard line ink and this is in that in a way um there are no like dangerous properties or properties that you know the majority of fountain pens are going to have any issues with so no cleaning problems nothing like that and i said here it's not iron ghoul or document ink so a lot of blue blacks traditionally are Iron gall, so they go down a more blue color and they dry a gray color. This is what you get. You get what you get with this ink. This is the color. Um, but also, it's not one of their document inks, so it's not a water resistant ink in the same way. It has some water resistant water resistance, as we'll see, uh, but it is not one of their document inks. So let's talk about the performance. I've said excellent, excellent saturation, good flow and wetness, a teal undertone, which I've said, um, and a fair dry time. So after twenty seconds, it's still you know a little bit wet as uh, it's, these inks, detrimental inks tend to be a slightly on the wetter side in my, well, from what I have found. Um, I've said it's nice on the page, excellent contrast and a strong ink, but it is hard on lower end paper. Um, like there's a lot, we, a couple of the papers I showed on are not fountain pen friendly papers. They are not designed to be used with liquid ink like this and a lot of roller balls bleed through. Um, so an ink that it, like this that is has a lot of concentration and saturation that's quite wet, it does bleed through a little bit. In terms of extras on this ink, I've said it's got fair shade, low sheen, there's a tiny bit that pops up occasionally, but not so much in writing, no shimmer and a mid water resistance. So here where I put the water down and dab it up, um, you, it's, you've kept all the detail of everything, uh, but it is that sort of gray undertone that is left behind. And when I've moved around with the water pen, you can see uh, as it sort of rehydrates, it does move around. And then of course in the chromatography, not a lot of this moves. It sort of, we've got the, the gray black, the gray blue, sorry, then a lighter blue and then a gray that comes through. Uh, which is tying in that sort of black tone, but not a lot moves. You get a good sort of amount left behind and it doesn't sort of flood through the, the chromatography paper there. If we look at the reverse of this Tom or River page, you see nothing has come through. It performs very, very nicely. It's got a bit of ghosting. It's a rich dark colored ink, so it's going to, but it doesn't actually like um, bleed through at all. Now looking at it on a uh, standard like student notepad paper, um, you can see there is a little bit of feathering there. It's spread and the tone is a lot grayer and more muted. Uh, and if you look at the back, you see it does it does come through quite strongly uh, there. Even in the extra fine nib, we're still getting quite a bit sort of coming through on this paper. Now we get it on the regular, uh, you know, office printer paper, ATGSM printer paper. Um, and once again, the tone is, is more muted. It's a little duller. Uh, we don't get any shading or anything like that. There's a bit of feathering, not as bad. Um, and if we look at the reverse, 
it, it's, it does come through. It performs okay in comparison to a few other inks I have on here, um, but it is, you know, harder on lower end paper. And now we have it on Rhodia, uh, sort of like the one of those like gold standards of fountain pen paper. Uh, you see in the swatch, we actually get lovely tonal variations, sort of like very rich, dark, moody, uh, dark, you know, blue blacky kind of tone, uh, and then some lighter, nice lighter tealer tones. And um, I didn't write with it with the extra fine, but we've seen how that writes on other. Uh, paper um but we get some nice sort of shading and the t lines are nice and tight where i put the water down this is where i put the water down and then just let it dry um you can see that there are you know it has spread out sort of quite a lot if we look at the reverse of this page you can see only where we put the swatch down and where we put the water down has anything come through in the writing nothing has come down at all so doing a color comparison now, I've got a number of inks I want to put it alongside. And the first things I'm going to do is put it alongside a blue, Waterman Serenity Blue, because that is the standard. And then a black, which is Carbon Black from Platinum, which is my, like, I suppose one of my favorite blacks on things like, alongside things like uh, Aurora Black, for instance. But this has got some lovely permanents and stuff. It's a good, rich, dark black. So you can see sort of where it fits. Um, I'm going to show it alongside a couple of other sort of blue blacks. We've got Dime Mine. 1864 blue black there you see it's not as like blue like a gray blue in the in the dye mine what, the greeny tealy blue there in the detrimentus and then uh the monteverde blue black which is sort of more on the gray end of blue black so you can see where it sort of sits in that family and then a couple of things i wanted to show alongside were dye mine twilight here which has some i think some similarities in sort of the undertones of the ink and then robert oster Blue Addiction, which was an exclusive to the Australian retailer Pulp Addiction, uh, which I think also has some very similar uh, tealy blue undertones. So let's now talk about the business price. This is a slightly different price point to the regular inks. Um, so it's $13.92 for the 45ml bottle euro, that is, or uh, $15.50 US dollars. So I think uh, it's a it's it's like half a euro more, 70 euro cents uh, more for you know for the 45ml bottle, which we have um, here, the standard 45ml bottle. Um, and then yeah, just a couple of dollars more US. Um, I think it's well priced ink. I've given it three and a half out of five simply because I think it's got good water resistance. I think it's a great color. It's got some interesting properties. But what I find, like, I think sort of the performance on lower end paper sort of just holds it back ever so slightly. Um, but I've said I love this color and the whole line. I love these sort of rich, dark ink colors. Um, lots of great properties. Some bleeding feather, unfortunately, on low end paper. But if you're writing on good quality paper, Tom or River, Rodeo, Clefontaine, Graffalo, Midori, that kind of stuff, you're not going to regalia. You're not going to strike up too many issues with this ink. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. It's a beautiful ink. On the right paper, this ink is absolutely stunning. So this was Deo Tremendous Black Blue from the Black Edition. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button, all of that kind of stuff. Thank you for watching this month, and I hope you enjoyed my little delve into Dad Tremendous and some of their beautiful inks. Big thank you to Dad Tremendous for supporting this month of reviews um, by providing a number of the inks for review. Um, please check out their website. Support this company. I think they do they have really, really great inks, and I don't think they quite get the attention they should get. So thank you for watching. In the meantime, enjoy your inks. Enjoy writing. And I'll talk to you soon.